What's going on, everyone? Juice Bags here, and welcome back to some Dungeon Defenders 2 and another progression tutorial. Today, we're going to be talking about how to bust into Chaos 2. Oh my god! Which means the campaign's been completed. Uh, you should feel comfortable doing the Chaos 1 maps. So, you should be able to do every one of the Chaos 1 maps without any issues. And you've gotten yourself some nice gear and upgrades and probably a few ascension points. Now, before we get into anything, uh, I wanted to talk real quick about shards. And first off, we know in the campaign mode, defense critical damage and fortification shards both drop. And then in Chaos 1, some key shards for builders are the Stunfire Shard for Squire's Cannons, Destruction, which you'll be using Destruction quite frequently in just about everything until you get through Chaos 4 and into Chaos 5, and then Empowered Flame for Flamethrowers. Uh, these three shards are C1 Drop Shards, and it is definitely makes your life easier if you have them. Uh, in the case of Destruction, you're going to want several of those. Uh, as I mentioned, you're going to be using these pretty heavily until you get all the way up until Chaos 4 or 5. Now, on that same note, let's hop in and talk about Ascension. Now, just busting into Chaos 2, your Ascension level is not going to be super high. Uh, depending on how much Chaos 1 you did and how much grinding you did on just the Ascension itself, the most important things you need to do. Now, I'm only going to be talking about builders here as DPS really does not matter. Uh, you can DPS on any of the heroes. Uh, the Siege Rollers that come on Chaos 2 are still low enough that you can pretty much DPS through them on any DPS hero at all. Uh, the key there, of course, is being repair that wall. So the second a Siege Roller spawns, you need to be prepared to start doing wall repairs, which means you got to make sure you have some green mana. So run around the map a little on your way over to the Siege Roller and collect up some. And that way you have some mana ready to go when repair time comes. Um, now, skipping the ascent or the offense category altogether in Ascension, let's go ahead and take a look at defense. The first 20 points on every single builder on the defense category, you should put directly into defense speed. So at Ascension level 60, you'll have that defense speed maxed. And most of you won't be to level 60, I wouldn't guess, before you start trying Chaos 2. However, any Ascension you do have in the Defense category, you need to make sure you put directly into Defense Speed. Every one of your builders. Now on the Utility category, same thing we mentioned last time, your first 20 points all need to go into Defense Crit Chance. Uh, defense Crit has, and Hero Crit for that matter, has very nice scaling in Dungeon Defenders 2, and it is a very important aspect of the game. So your first 20 points, no matter what, without upset, without deterring in any way whatsoever, should always go into defense crit chance for every single builder you have. So at Ascension level 60, your defense crit chance will be maxed out through Ascension. Now, once again, if you're lower, whatever points you do have, throw them right there. Now, if you're not building on this hero and you're just going into hero damage, it's going to be the exact opposite. You're going to go to hero crit chance. So your first 20 points should go into hero crit chance if you intend to do no building on that hero. Now, just like Chaos 1 with the little shieldies, uh, Chaos 2 has its own baddie. And quite a few people have a tough time adjusting to it. So I want to take a moment to talk about it. Now, first, of course, at first, uh, Chaos 1 has the vanguards. Uh, the vanguards are those highly trained deflection experts, uh, basically with the frontal shields. Now, the vanguards, of course, it made, uh, like any sort of ground traps, AoE traps, very, very valuable. In Chaos 2, the special mob is the cyborg. And you see cyborgs are orcs that, orc units that utilize rare elements in their weapons and armor that serves to disable a variety of traps and auras. The key there being traps and auras. 
Now the disable from the cyborgs is 15 seconds, and 15 seconds can be a whole lot of time when there's a big pack pounding on your walls. So let's go ahead and run through the defenses and take a look at all of the damaging defenses from the original four heroes. First off, we got the Hunter's defenses here. We've got the Blaze Balloon, the Poison Dart Tower, the Geyser, and the Explosive Trap. Now, we already know that Cyborgs are going to disable Traps and Auras. That means the Explosive, the Geyser, and the Blaze Balloon are out. You can find ways to use them, and everybody always does. However, you're fighting against the natural grain of things. And since it's your first attempt into Chaos 2, you should avoid using those three defenses. Poison Dart Towers? No problem. Because the Shieldies are gone. Those Vanguards are gone, and now the Cyborgs are there. Poison Dart Towers are actually not only strong, but they're highly recommended. And they using Poison Dart Towers will turn a Cyborg into just a regular Orc, as it has no special power that can disable it. Now on to Squire Defenses. Uh, harpoons and cannons. Both of these, of course, projectiles, not a trap or an aura. These are safe. These will also turn the cyborg into a regular old orc, and it will have no special abilities. Now, on top of that, I mentioned that stunfire shard earlier. The stunfire shard in cannons can be very, very valuable, not only putting out quite a bit of damage but also offering up lots and lots of crowd control. Now let's move on over to the Monk. We've got the Lightning Strike Sara, the Skyguard Tower, and... Oops, I went in backwards order. <laughs> that's not a Lightning Strike Sara. That's a Flame Aura. So we got a Flame Aura, a Skyguard Tower, and the Lightning Strike Sara. Now once again, we know that Lightning Strikes is an Aura. The Cyborg is going to disable Traps and Auras, so that is going to be out of the question. Uh, the Flame Aura, obviously that's an Aura as well. That one is going to be out of the question too. Now, the Skyguard Tower can actually be used in every Chaos tier, as I mentioned in the Chaos 1 uh, version of this series. And very valuable against Flyers, so by all means, throw some Skyguards in the mix. But let's go ahead and chalk off everything that we shouldn't be using in Chaos 2. Now, just like I mentioned in the last episode, the flamethrowers are very valuable all the way up through Chaos 5, and usually even can be used pretty readily in Chaos 6 as well. In Chaos 7, flamethrowers have a little bit more of a problem. However, the flamethrower is still a very valuable tower. Uh, Earth Shatters as well. Earth Shatters, you know, that's coming from the ground up, hitting the center of the target. Uh, not a ground trap or an aura no chance of the cyborg to disable those. So out of the original four heroes, the poison dart tower, the cannon, the harpoon, skyguard towers, flamethrower towers, and earth shatter towers are the defenses you should be using in Chaos 2 as it basically limits the special mob to a powerless state where it's no longer a special cyborg and just a regular old orc. Now just like the cannons had stun fire, we also mentioned the empowered flame shard which drops in Chaos 1. The empowered flame shard can be a nice addition to this defense, and personally, the defenses that I would definitely suggest trying out are the flamethrower for sure, skyguards if you're on a map that has lots of flyers, the cannons as well, just because we do get that extra shard in the deal. And the poison dart tower. Um, just the flamethrower, the cannon, and the poison dart tower alone can be extremely valuable in Chaos 2. And will make your life a little bit easier through the transition getting there. Let's go ahead and load up a Chaos 2 map and look at a sample build. Alright, so here we found ourselves in the Ramparts Chaos 2 Trials, and let's go ahead and check it out. So, of course, we know we have a lane over here, plus there's going to be flyers coming from that lane. In fact, let's go ahead and get the lane tags going here. Now, 
Actually, it doesn't look like there is any flyers from that lane. Looks like the flyers are coming from the mid this time. Now, over on this side, we have this lane. And, of course, we have that lane right here. Plus, we have the main two lanes coming in the center and converging in the middle. Plus, two flyer lanes up top. So let's go ahead and do a potential build for this map and see what we can come up with here. Now, first off, you have this, this map, you've got a lovely, lovely area that could potentially be used for flamethrowers. So although normally when I do this map, I actually usually wall it back here, you do have quite an amazing opportunity to wall this map like right here. Now, uh, double walls may or may not be required. You'll have to play around with your build. Um, if I was to build there personally, I would probably single wall it and go slightly over to the right side. As although the squiggly shows the mobs coming all the way out, there is a corner right here. And you don't want the mobs to be able to cut through that corner. So you want your wall to be close enough where they can't get around that way. Now let's go ahead and take a look here. Now this is kind of an obvious choice as with two lanes converging into one, that's a prime opportunity to cut the DU expenditure down and kill everything as it converges together. Uh, in fact, you may even want to go back just a little bit more uh, depending on how many ranged mobs you're getting out of those particular lanes. Uh, we're showing quite a few ranged mobs here, so not a bad idea to pull it back. Now here we've kind of got a natural choke point right here in the middle. Now um, this wall could take a beating, however, nothing should get through it. And then here we have another opportunity where even though it is a really wide path, you can usually get away with only using one wall right here. Plus we know that flamethrowers are going to be a hot item on this map since it's Chaos 2. And we've got some nice places where we can hide flamethrowers over here to keep them away from any ranged mobs. Let's go ahead and... Well, you know, let's start right off with some flyer control. We know we do have uh, two flyer lanes in the middle, and one skyguard tower should do the trick. And we see by the range of that, it's not going out super far. However, it is going out far enough to handle it. You can move it as close as you're comfortable with, but keep in mind, if you have it too close and an ogre stomps, it's going to ruin it. So I usually prefer to go back just a little ways. Now we also know that poison dart towers, flamethrowers of course, and then cannons are all viable options. The cannonball stun shard is a very very nice choice as it's going to give you a little bit of crowd control in your lane. So why don't we go with tell you what let's put it like up top let's go with a cannonball say right there let's go with another cannon how about right here and let's go ahead and put two cannons on each of the outside lanes and then maybe we'll even go three in the middle here we've got another unique opportunity where we do have a spot to put cannons here However, there is a chance that ranged mobs could throw at the cannons from over this way. So a much safer bet is actually to put the cannons back over this way. Now, this is going to do double protection for you as the ranged mobs should not be throwing up this way. And there's really no physical mobs that are going to be hitting those uh, cannons from that spot. Same thing here, we have another unique opportunity. Um, I kind of want to reserve this space over here for a flamethrower, so I'm not going to put anything there. <clears throat> However, we could go cannons up top here. We could throw cannons up top here, and then they're even going to avoid some ogre stops. Lots of different options for cannonballs on this one. And then right here, I think the best bet is going to be you know what, let's just throw two cannons. Let's just go, we'll go up high and elevate it as well. That way we don't have to worry about any ogre stomps. And you know what, this is a very heavy lane. 
So let's go ahead and throw two more and just put one on each side pointing in towards the wall. Now keep in mind we have nothing with really big range quite yet. Uh, we won't get the range shard until Chaos 3. So our range is a bit of an issue. So any ranged mobs that stay out here that are just thrown at your walls, your best bet is to just go out and manually kill them yourself. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the flamethrowers. As uh, we know, flamethrowers are a viable choice as well. And we actually have 500 DU left, so there are lots and lots of opportunities here to throw some flamethrowers around. Uh, I'm going to ele elevate these guys once again to avoid any sort of ogre stomps. And let's go with two right on each side right here. Come on, you can do it. There we go. Now these flamethrowers are going to just nuke anything that gets built up on your wall. Now, like I said, you will have some range mobs every once in a while taking pot shots at them. However, for the most part, that's relatively safe placement. And uh, shy of like a plagued hawk or a slakelion with its large cleave, these flamethrowers should stay relatively safe. Now let's take a look at this lane here. We've got uh, some more opportunities. We could put a flamethrower right there and not have to worry at all about any ranged mobs. You could even go with another one if you wanted. And you know what? Why not? Let's throw down a third. We'll put it up top here as well. Now, even that one up top has the potential to take some kind of clipping damage from a ranged mob. It is a pretty safe bet. Uh, maybe a repair here and there, and that will about do it. Now, I did mention this side right over here. And in fact, I like this area so much. I'm going to go ahead and throw two flamethrowers right there. As we've got natural built-in protection, no ranged mobs can take any shots at it. And then just to kind of close the deal, let's throw another flamethrower right up top. And that one's far enough out of the cleave range where we're not going to have to worry about any issues there. Now we've got 100 DU left, which gives us two more flamethrowers. Or actually, yeah, just two more flamethrowers. Hmm, let's see, what do we want to do? I'm thinking maybe... Maybe let's thin out these two cannonballs. That's going to give us 160, and that will allow four more flamethrowers. And then something along the lines of... You know, you could come all the way out with them, to be honest with you, and spawn camp it. You can put a flamethrower here, too, but you do have to put it up high, as uh, down low, it will probably take a little cleave damage with that wall placement. However, this would be a solid build that would be worth giving a shot on Chaos 2. Now, this is just something I kind of threw together. However, you guys get the point. The Chaos 2 special mob is the Cyborg. So you want to avoid using anything that the cyborg can disable. Uh, this is going to give us adequate AOE damage, some good CC from the cannonball stun, plus an upfront face punch as the cannons are pretty mean, and then a sky guard to handle that flyer lane. Uh, building to the weaknesses of the mobs that are present is the best way to advance through the chaos trials, and certainly the way for you to win your first Chaos 2 match. So that will do it for now. Thank you for watching. Click that like button and please subscribe to the channel. And we will be back soon with more Dungeon Defenders 2. Thanks again. I'll see ya.